In this video, we're going to do some stoichiometry practice problems. And these problems are going to be analogous to problems you might see on the exam. So these are going to involve some, you know, a little bit more complicated, like the ones that are in the back of the textbook. And um, it's going to allow us to go over some of the concepts as they integrate together into these questions. Uh, so this problem, um, the reaction looks like an ox a combustion reaction where we have ethanol reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. We're going to learn more about these reactions in chapter 4 where we're going to actually define what the different types of reactions are. But we learned about combustion reactions when we did elemental analysis. So we know that this is a combustion reaction. So this one says, how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced if 20.5 milligrams of ethanol vapor is reacted with 35.2 milligrams of oxygen gas? Just looking at this problem, I know immediately that I have to do a certain thing. And before I even start the problem, I get a couple of pieces of information here that are really critical. So they give us information about carbon dioxide. They give us a mass for that. And they give us a mass of ethanol vapor, which is another reactant. So there are two reactants in this problem, ethanol and oxygen, and I'm getting information about both. So that's an automatic tell that this is a limiting reagent problem. So it doesn't say that it's a limiting reagent problem, but it is a limiting reagent problem. And the way that I know that, I have two reactants and I get information masses of both. Now there's one other thing that we have to be careful about. You'll notice that the masses in this case are in milligrams. So this shows you how we can start to build in a little bit of complexity in terms of now you not only have to do the basic stoichiometry, but you have to do a unit conversion to get these things into grams. So let's get started. The way that we're going to set this up is we're going to set up our 20.5 milligrams of the ethanol C2H5OH. That's one of our reactants. And then we have the 35.2 milligrams of the O2, which is our other reactant. So we have to have two stoichiometry lines because uh, these two stoichiometry lines are going to allow us to figure out how much carbon dioxide is made from both. Now the reason why I'm going to go to carbon dioxide is because this question explicitly asks for um, this question explicitly asks for the carbon dioxide that's produced. I think at the beginning of the video I said that it gives us information about two reactants and I said that carbon dioxide was a reactant. That was a mistake. The, the oxygen gas. We get information about the um, ethanol vapor and the oxygen gas, not about the carbon dioxide. It's asking us to come up with the carbon dioxide. So I apologize if I, if I made that little mistake at the beginning of the video. So our first step is we have to convert the milligrams to grams. And the reason for that is because our molecular weights are in grams. So to do that, we can set it up, and you could do it either way. One way of doing this would be to say that you have 10 to the minus 3 grams for every 1 milligram. That would be using the table. Or another way of writing the exact same thing would be saying that there are 1,000 milligrams for every 1 gram. Both are the same. Okay, so uh, we convert it to grams, and the reason why we do that is because now we can use the molecular weight of 46.07 grams for every one mole of the C2H5OH. And now the advantage here is once we're in moles, we can now convert from moles of reactants to moles of product. So we have for every one mole of the C2H5, OH, we have two moles of CO2, which is the product. And the reason why I'm going to moles of CO2 is because that's what the problem is asking us about. And for every one mole of CO2, we want to get the mass of that. It says how many grams are produced. So we use the molecular weight of 44.01 grams per mole. And so when you multiply this out, you take 20.5, multiply it by 2, multiply it by 44.01, then you push the divide button and divide by 1,000. You push the divide button again and divide by 46.07. You get 0 0.0392 grams. And the problem asks for grams, so we're, we're good on that front. Okay, so let's convert our milligrams to grams for the O2. We're going to use our molecular weight of O2, which is 32.00 grams for every one mole. 
And then for every three moles of O2, I pull my balance coefficients, I get two moles of CO2. And then for every one mole of CO2, I get 44.01 grams. So in this case we get, uh, when you multiply that out and divide, you get 0 0.0323 grams. And this shows you why it's so important not to just select the one that has the smallest mass because the 20.5 20 milligrams of the, eth the uh, ethanol gives a larger massive product of CO2 than the O2 does. So this is a good example for um, not just picking the one with the smallest mass. We have the two different outcomes, and this outcome gives us the, the least, so it's our limiting reagent, and that's going to be our theoretical yield. And this is identify the excess reagent and calculate how many grams remained after the reaction is complete. Well, we can write already that we know that the excess reagent is equal to C2H5OH. So that we have done already. Now, if you remember how we work these problems with excess reagent, what we're going to do is we are going to um, take our limiting reagent, which is 35.2 milligrams of oxygen, and we're going to figure out how much of that excess reagent is consumed. So we're going to convert this to grams. And then um, we are going to use the molecular weight of the O2, which is 32.00 grams for every one mole of O2. And then we're going to convert for every three moles of O2, we get one mole of C2H5OH. And then we're going to use the molecular weight for every one mole of C2H5OH, we have uh, 46.07 grams. So now we get the mass of the ethanol that was consumed, which is 0 0.0169 grams. So now we just do our subtraction. We started with 20.5 milligrams. And if you convert this, this is going to equal 0 0.02. 0 0.05 grams, so we subtract 0 0.0169 grams, and we get 0 0.0036 grams, and that's our answer. The next problem says, a 2.543 gram sample of salicylic acid is reacted with an excess of the other reactant and 1.876 grams of aspirin is isolated from the reaction. What is the percent yield of the reaction? Okay, so the salicylic acid, this is the salicylic acid. We have that. This is reacted with the other one, and the, whatever this other one is, it's in excess. So we know that the salicylic acid is going to be our limiting reagent. Um, so that's just reading the problem and kind of getting a start. So now it says uh, we take 2.543 grams of the salicylic acid, and then it gives us a yield of 1.876 grams. So to kind of get the problem started, if we want to get our percent yield, what we need to know is we need to know the actual divided by the theoretical times 100. So in this case, it's saying that the, the actual yield that of the reaction though is 1.876 grams of aspirin. So now the question is, is what is our theoretical yield, which we have to calculate from the reactant that we're given? So if we had 2.543 grams of the salicylic acid, C7H6O3, we can figure out how much of the aspirin we, we make. So this has a molecular weight of 138.12 grams for every one mole of the C7H6O3. And in this case, there's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So for every one mole of C7H6O3, it makes one mole of C9H8O4. If we want to get a mass of that, for every one mole of the aspirin, C9H8O4, the molecular weight is 180.16 grams. So when we calculate that out, we get 3.317 grams. So we put that up here, 3.317 grams. 
and when you work that out, you get a yield of 35.8%. So the key thing here is to be able to distinguish what the actual yield is versus the theoretical yield. And you'll see this word here, isolated from the reaction, that's an indication that that number is the actual. It's an experimental value, whereas the theoretical is something that you have to calculate. So that may help you in, in identifying what's going on in these problems. The last stoichiometry practice problem is uh, zinc sulfide plus 3O2 gives 2 zinc oxide plus 2 SO2 gas. So let's get started. It says a 12.52 gram sample of zinc sulfide is reacted with one liter of oxygen gas under standard conditions. What is the theoretical yield of sulfur dioxide gas? The molecular weight equals 64.06 grams per mole. So reading this problem, we have two re reactants, zinc sulfide and oxygen. We're getting information about both. We've got a mass here of the zinc sulfide. And interestingly enough, we get a volume here of oxygen. Now we get one critical piece of information, and that's the density. So we can work with density to, to get that volume into a mass. So we'll take a look at that second. Let's just go with the easy one first. So because this is a limiting reagent problem, uh, we identify that from the fact that we have two reactants and we get information about both. We'll start with the zinc sulfide first. So we get 12.52 grams of zinc sulfide. The molecular weight is 94.47 grams per mole. And we look at the mole ratios for every one, uh, I'm sorry, for every two moles of zinc sulfide, we get two moles of SO2 gas. And then for every one mole of SO2 gas, we get 64.06 grams. And so we should be able to do our calculation. You get 8.49 grams of SO2. Now let's take a look at the more challenging one. So this one gives us 1.00 liters of O2 gas. Now the key thing here is we need to get to moles. And to get to moles, we have the molecular weight. But the problem is, is we don't have a mass. But we do have a density. And the density they give us, conveniently enough, is, is in grams per liter. So what this tells us is that for every one liter, that's what this density is telling us, there is 1.43 grams. Remember, the density can be written as a unit conversion where there is, for every 1.43 grams, there is one liter, according to those units. Now that we have it in grams of O2, we can use the molecular weight, which is 32.00 grams for every one mole of O2 to get us to moles, and now we can use the mole to mole ratio. For every three moles of O2, there are two moles of SO2. And then finally, we have for every one mole of SO2, there is 64.06 .06 grams. We get 1.91 grams. So in this case, the theoretical yield of the sulfur dioxide is gonna be the one that gives us the least, which is gonna be the 1.91 grams, which comes from the O2. Okay, now let's look at the second part. It says the percent yield of the reaction was determined to be 74.5%. What was the actual yield of the reaction? So this is a, a really good question because this is looking at percent yield, but it's a little bit backwards. So if we have our percent yield equation, percent yield is equal to the actual divided by the theoretical times 100. So if we start to plug things in, we know what our theoretical yield is, and in this case, ironically enough, we know what our percent yield is supposed to be. So that is 74.5% is equal to the theoretical, which is 1.91 grams, and the actual, which is what we're looking for, times 100. So if we want to figure out what our actual yield is, we divide both sides by 100. That gives us 0 0.745 is equal to the actual over 1.191 1, uh, grams. So if we solve for the actual in this case by taking 1.91 times 0 0.745, the actual is going to equal 1.42 grams.